Marhaban. Hello. My name is Ian Campbell, and this is the 16th in a series of videos intended to teach you the Arabic alphabet and sound system and to prepare you to understand how to learn vocabulary words. In this lesson, we're going to learn the numbers 0 through 10 and how to draw them in the eastern digits, the ones used in most of the Arabic-speaking world. We'll also touch on how to count things, which is a bit trickier in Arabic than it is in English. So let's begin by looking at the word for numbers, al-arqam, the digits, really. Basic numbers are pretty easy, but still tricky. Large ones are very complicated. And in Arabic, we're going to read numbers from left to right, like in English, not right to left, like we usually read words in Arabic. So this can be a real pain, especially at first with large numbers, but we're gonna to stick to really small ones right now. So we're going to learn the Eastern set of digits. And in order to do this, I'm gonna teach you the Western ones as well. The Western ones are simply our set of digits, the ones we call Arabic numerals. Arabs call them the Hindi numerals because they got them from India long ago. So there are the Western set of digits, our set of digits. There are the Eastern set of digits, the ones used basically from Libya eastward in the Arab speaking world. I'm going to give you how to spell the number and how to pronounce the number. And as we go, I'm gonna talk about a number of other things related to how these numbers evolved. So first of all, we have sufr or zero. So zero is a concept that the Arabs got from the Indians and Europeans got from the Arabs. Up until quite long in the Middle Ages, we didn't use a zero in the Western European world. We used Roman numerals instead, which are incredibly difficult to calculate with. So the concept of there being no something was actually really, really useful in the uh, early Arab world, uh, the world of commerce and trade and so forth. And this spread quite rapidly to Europe once Europeans learned of them. So our word is cipher for zero. We get the English word cipher, C-I-P-H-E-R from this word. And in the Eastern set of digits, it's just a little dot in the center. And this can be really confusing because sometimes it's hard to make a big enough dot if you're using a ballpoint pen or what have you. So watch out for the zero, which is just this little dot here. The word for one is wahed. So make sure you say the hat in here, not wahed like you would in English, but wahed. Uh, in the Western digits, of course, it's R number one. And in the Eastern digits, it looks like a number one. So that's really super convenient. And uh, you're going to be really happy about that because it looks just like our digits. But then we get to two. Our number for two is ithnain. We don't put a hamza beneath the alif here for reasons I'm not going into. But we say ithnain. Sometimes it's ithnan in really proper Arabic. Don't worry about it. And it has two different forms. In print, it looks like this one here with this hook shape at the top of the stick. In handwriting, it's this kind of backwards number seven almost shape that looks like this. A lot of times this particular shape will get written in this manner, more like this here, more like a backwards letter C. So you will see that occasionally. So be prepared to see it sometimes. But in handwriting, it looks quite different from it does the way it does in print. And this will get more complicated once we add three into the mix. So the word for three is thalatha. That's not too difficult. But in print, the number three looks like a hook with two little loops on the end. And in handwriting, it looks just like an in print number two. So you could see the possibility for confusion here is really rife. Um, most things having to do with the Arabic numbering system are kind of a pain, frankly. Um, it's overcomplicated and it hasn't gone through the process of simplification that a lot of other numbering systems have. So there's a lot of bells and whistles associated with the numbering system, most of which I won't teach you in this first series of videos because it's, it's too much. You can fake it with just the basic numbers and faking it is absolutely the way to go when you're a novice student of a foreign language. Then we have the number four, which looks just like a backwards number three. So you can see that's going to be a real pain to differentiate these digits. Oh, one looks like a one, but four looks like a backward three. And just wait, you've not seen nothing yet. Our word for four is arba, and you have to make sure to get the 
ein sound in there, which a lot of Americans have trouble doing at first. It's not arba, it's arba, and you have to get the ah sound in there. So be very careful about that. So that's arba is number four. Chemsa is number five. Note my scene here without three little dots because that's the way I write it in handwriting. Chemsa is the number five, but it looks like a great big old zero. So now you can see how it can get really confusing, but wait, there's more. So the number five looks like a zero in our numbering system. So translating back and forth from our numbering system to the Eastern digits can often be a real pain because a lot of the digits look too much like the ones in our system. If they were all complete weird little glyphs, it wouldn't be as difficult but they too closely resemble our digits, which is the real problem. And then we get to six. Six is sitta, and it looks like a six in the Western digits. If you're in Morocco or Algeria, you can read these, no problem. But it looks like a number seven in our set of digits when we write them in the Eastern digits. So again, you can see the potential for confusion here. Really watch out when you're reading numbers because it's very tricky at first. Long ago, the number six was really Sidza, or something similar to that. And its root is Sin, Dal, Sin. Most of the rest of the letters here are really clear. Hang on a second, let me rewrite that to get it the right spelling. Most of the roots, the three letter roots of the other numbers are really clear. So Wahid is Wa, Ha, Dal, Thalatha is thal, or it's tha, lam, thal. Arba is ra, ba, ein. Chemsa is cha, mim, sin. Sitta, although we say sitta and we write sitta, its root is really sin, dal, sin. Long ago, before Arabic became a written language, it was likely something like sidza. But it's easier to say sitta than it is to say sidza. Try it a few times and you'll see. And that's how it became the way it is. However, this is going to crop up later on when we get to sixth and so forth. But we won't get to that right now, so don't worry about it. Seven looks like a V and is pronounced seba. So make sure you get the ein sound, not seba, but seba, like that, seba. So be careful about how to pronounce it like that. Eight looks like the opposite of the seven. So again, you can see the potential for confusion here. And its word is a mouthful, famania. Now in most dialects, it isn't pronounced this way. It's pronounced something like tumna or something like that. But this is what it is in standard Arabic, famania. And it's that mim noon is its root. Notice how here, I haven't really written a tooth for the tha, and this is very common when you have meme as the second letter in a word, that instead of making the tooth and going down and around, we won't bother. We'll just make a little flat line like this and then put the loop under it. You'll see this all the time in a printed text, so learn to watch out for it. Also, another example of how the numbering system is a pain is this number has four syllables, whereas in English, the max we get is two. So you can see how that's a pain as well. And then we get to number nine, which looks pretty much exactly the same in both sets of digits. So again, if they were all weird glyphs, this would be easy, but they look too much like our numbers, which is the problem. The number for nine is tis'a. Again, like sub'a, you got to make sure to get the ein sound in there. Tis'a, tis'a. In Morocco, it's tso. But in standard Arabic, it's tis'a. So that's our number for nine. And then 10 is going to be a wahid and a sifr, which makes sense. But if you saw this number written over here, this one in the Eastern digits, this would be 15, khamsatashar, not 10. So you can see how confusing this can be, especially at first. Our word is ashara. So not ashara, but ashara. Learn to pronounce it that way. And pretty soon I'll go through and give you the teens and the hundreds and the thousands and so forth. But for now, we're going to just stick through with the numbers 0 through 10. And now I'm going to go down and count things for you because counting is more of a pain in Arabic than it is in English. If you're just counting off people or things, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31
But if you're counting nouns, if you're saying like one dog or three dogs or five dogs, it becomes more of a pain. So I'm going to draw it out for you here, and I'm going to give you nouns of both genders. So a walad is a boy, also a son, S-O-N, son. Um, and uh, usually this implies a boy who hasn't really hit puberty yet. Not always, but that's kind of the implication of it. So walad is boy, and if there's one of him, we're going to put wahid after the noun. So walad wahid means one boy. A bint is a girl, also a daughter. So, uh, and usually like a prepubescent girl, like a, a maybe up to seventh or eighth grade or so. So bint is girl, bint wahida. So I'm going to add tamar buta to the number because I'm making it feminine, because bint is a feminine noun, because it represents a feminine person. So I take this number and I add tamar buta to make it feminine. And that's how I count one of something. Put the wahid after the noun and make it agree. If there's two of them, however, I have to do something completely different. Arabic has this thing called the muthanna. Muthanna comes from ithnain for two. It has a dual. Whenever there's two of something, you have to use different endings for adjectives and verbs and so forth to describe them. And you also can't count them with the number two. Long ago, Old English and Early Middle English had a dual as well, but it evolved out of the language, whereas it has stayed in Arabic. So a walad is a boy, waladan is two boys. Sometimes this is going to change to waladain, and in fact in spoken Arabic it's always going to be waladain, and that's going to look like this, and the ya here has a sukun over it because it's ain and not een. So waladain. And so this ending is saying to. You can't say ithnain walad. I mean, you can. And because you're a brand new speaker of Arabic, most native speakers are going to be able to figure out what you meant. But we use an ending instead. Waladan, two boys. Bintan, two girls. So I've just stuck the an ending. And sometimes it's ain as well. Um, on to the word bint, with dal is a non-connecting letter, but ta is a connecting letter. And then if I've got three or four or up to ten of something, I'm going to do it rather differently. I'm going to put the number before the plural noun, because so much about Arabic is way more complicated than it should be. Not necessarily difficult, but complicated. So the plural of walad is awlad. Awlad is boys or sons. So arbat awlad is what I'm going to say, which works for an English speaker, for boys. If I've got three girls, I'm going to say thalath banat. Banat is the plural of bint. So bint, wabint, wabint, girl and girl and girl. Banat, girls. And here's there's three of them. And I've left the tamar buta off the number because the original noun was feminine. Do not worry about this. This is one of those things that you can go back and learn in an advanced class. It's called reverse gender polarity, and it's one of the many, many complicated things about how we count things in Arabic. If you just put the number before the plural noun, you're fine. If you said thalathat banat instead of thalath banat, everybody will understand you, and probably 80% of people won't even notice that you messed it up. So don't worry about it. The key to doing well as a novice in a foreign language is to throw words at the wall and hopefully some of them will stick and worry about the grammatical details later. Just learn this. The number one goes after the noun. The number two isn't used. We use an ending instead. And the rest of the numbers all go before the noun. And with that, I'm going to count from zero to ten. Sifr, wahid, Ithnain, oh, if I were clever, I'd have counted down from 10 and stopped it, but oh well. Thalatha, Arba, Chemsa, Sitta, Seba, Thamanya, Tisra, Ashara. And with that, I will.